All right, so I'm down to my last track. So I'm going to go ahead and bounce it. It's my BGV track. And that looks like that's it. No more after that. So again, I'm going to export song to disk. And as you can see, the rest of my stems are in here. And it's good to have good naming conventions and to be consistent. Like I, I have, you know, shortened names for all the instruments so that I can tell what they are. So for BGV, I just type in BGV. All right. So here we go. We're down to the last track. <coughs> Okay, so now we are pretty much done in this environment, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and save this out and quit. And there we are. So now we can leave the GarageBand environment to uh, now take this into main stage. Now, um, uh, I already have a template set up in main stage for, for all this to go into. So um, in other videos I cover... Um, the particulars of main stage. So if you don't understand main stage or kind of know your way around it, this may not make as much sense, but hopefully hopefully you've done that already and you kind of know your way around. Um, a good resource, by the way, for just kind of familiarizing yourself with main stage is this right here, the main stage 2 101. It can be purchased from the Mac App Store. And it's just a series of videos to just kind of show you your way around main stage. But I have um, already built my my template inside of main stage. So I'm going to go ahead and start there. And I uh, feel free to email me or or comment below um, if you would like to get this template for yourself. That way you can kind of start from the 10th floor as opposed to having to start from scratch. Um, so I'm going to start with a new. Let's close this one out. And so here's my template here. This is my playback template. Um, Got my song list over here, my playback here, and then these are the marker points. So I'll be able to hit a button to hit to go move around uh, to different markers. Current marker position, next marker position. So all those markers that we did in GarageBand are going to um, just translate in this environment when we bring those files in, which is really nice. Okay, so now that we've got our new uh, template opened up, the very first thing that needs to be done, and it's a very important step, because if you start dragging things at the concert level, um, you know you can't undo it so you have to start over so the first thing you need to do is create a patch and that patch is going to hold the information for our song uh, the song being uh, you never let go if I could spell it correctly okay um, and then let's go ahead and save our concert for this song uh, I'm going to call this also you never let go Okay, so all of the components of the song itself are going to be saved into this patch, and then we'll be able to um, archive just that that the information here. So we always want to make sure we create a patch first before we start um, putting our audio um, stems into it. So now with the uh, with the patch, as you can see, this channel strip area over here is completely empty. So what we need to do the firstly is to take our stems which are in my music folder and my garage band folder and here they are so I'm basically just going to pick all these guys up and I'm going to drag them straight into that patch into the channel strip area and you say yes so, so it's bringing in all those now the first time you import those audio files it actually takes quite a bit of time it was pretty quick on my end but it ha takes a, a little bit for it to analyze the audio and to put it in. Let's go ahead and save this again. And now what happens is is that it took those it's going to take those audio files from that location and it's going to copy them into this concert, which is good. So, you know, whenever you save a concert in main stage, uh, provided that you open up that concert in the future, all of the files associated with it are stored inside of that project folder, very much like a like a logic project folder which is really good. So it consolidates all your files, which is really nice. Okay, so the next thing we need to do over here, I need to reorder my channel strips and, you know, give them readable names here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put percussion on this side of piano. And 
I do want my pads after piano, but obviously I want pad one to appear before pad two. So move that guy over. Mandolin I will put before piano, right after acoustic. The thing about moving these channel strips around is that if you click and drag really quickly like this, it thinks you want to select multiple, but if you click and hold for just a little bit and then try to move it, it's a little bit easier. So just something to be be aware of. Okay, I'll keep the loop where it is. Now the guide track. Click and guide, I like to appear all the way on the left, so I'll put guide way over here. And okay, now here are my electrics. And I'll put the electrics before the mandolin over here. It's important to keep your channel strips in the same order as you create more of a song library inside a main stage. It's important to keep them in the same order so that when you are you working with it live, you know where everything is. And you know when you drag in audio files, it does color code them for you. Um, you can also change the color if colors are useful to you as far as like doing a quick eyeballing of uh, they are pretty irrelevant to me I don't I don't I don't really care about color but for some people that might be important so you can give these any color you want Okay, so that covers my electrics. Okay, moving on to drums. Okay, so continuing on, the next track is the click track, and I'm going to drag that over to the left. All the way to the left. Whoops, we've got drums here. Drums are going to go just to the right of the guide before percussion. The BGV track will be my last track over there on the far right. Acoustic. We'll go just after the electrics. So electric, after electric five, we'll put the acoustic right before mandolin. And then bass just to the right of the drums. Okay, so to recap, the order will be click, guide, drums, bass, percussion if you have it, and then all your electrics together, and then after electrics, your acoustic, then any other acoustic style instrument like a mandolin, then piano, pad, and any synth, and then finally loop and BGV at the end. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure all of these go to the right output. So I'm going to select all of these channel strips, and here at the bottom, this is your output area and we're going to send the output to the main outs 